Before continuing, I backtrack to Pearly Mountain 1 to pick up an item that I missed earlier on. Back to you, sheep. Thank you, Mr. Announcer Guy. My, what a sexy voice he has. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Tails Adventure on the Sega Game Gear. I am one well sheep yet again, and uh, moving back to the upper trail of Poly Mountain Zone Act 1, we are going into this little hidden alcove because there is an e power up that I completely missed my first time round. This is the Super Glove. What does it do? Well, I'm happy you asked. It's not like the Power Glove, it's bad. But I don't love it because it's bad. Basically, the the super glove by here it allows you to pick up rocks, and that's basically it. It's a useless item. You have like three chances in the entire game to be able to use it. So you're prob I'm never gonna show it off in this LP. And honestly, you can easily skip out on that power up without it affecting you in any way, shape, or form. So uh. Yeah, only, I only really advise picking it up if you want to get 100% completion, if you're down for 100%ing this game. But anyway, we need to make use of our new night vision goggles in this particular zone in order to make it so we can see. Without the night vision goggles, all of this will be pitch black, which makes no sense. It's covered in magma. It's covered in fire, for Christ's sake. Why can I not see without the night vision goggles? Fire is bright. Fire is light! It should light up the cave, or at least make it look all gloomy and have me be able to at least see the floors, but... Uh, I digress. But yeah, every time we enter and exit a new screen, we do need to make use of the, um... Night vision goggles in order to light up the screen so we can see what we are doing. And uh, one of the things you will notice about this particular zone is whenever we fly in certain areas, basically the fumes from the magma underneath us will basically push us up. It'll be like a hot air balloon essentially where the fire and the heat will actually start rising and it'll push you up whenever you're flying as tails. So you're going to find a lot of instances where you're going to be pushed up for no apparent reason just because you're flying or you're going to be pushed down sideways even though magma doesn't work downwards but whatevs. Basically you're going to find instances where you're just going to start being pushed and uh, yeah that's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. What can I say? Anyway one way I advised um, breaking open blocks like this is just fly over them because when you're flying you will drop your bombs directly underneath and what you don't want to go down here as tails normally because that is a bottomless pit if you fall down that pit that is it you have to re-enter the entire stage again and re-backtrack to this point so uh fang yep grab mecha tails and mecha tails would give you fang and fang the sniper is um it's an icon that basically allows you to gain more rings when you destroy mooks i believe you will be able to use him to uh basically get more health so if you find yourself dying a lot if you find yourself getting hurt a lot the fang icon there will help you out in the long run it will help you destroy mooks. well it won't help you destroy mooks but you will be able to get more rings you know folks so that's handy. That is definitely a handy power to have. And um, we're going to actually come up to one of the most dickish and treacherous platforming sequences in this game. And it's not because it, you can die from it. It's more because you will end up... If you fall, you have to re-exit the entire stage and re-enter the entire stage again. Because the moment we get to this point, you see these pillars. We need to arc our bomb throws in such a specific way so that we can destroy half of the pillar and leave a little bit still there so we can actually platform onto the bit that's still there and um, this is really tricky this is really tricky to get done right so uh, if you're playing this on the Sonic Adventure DX or on an actual Game Gear I advise you just I, I, I just advise you kiss your ass goodbye but uh, <laughs> if you're playing this through an emulator or something I advise just using save states just to make this a lot easier for yourself because otherwise, you there it's so easy to make a mistake, and if you make a mistake, you will fall, and uh, you will end up dropping down. And like I said, if you mess this up, you will have to redo this entire stage again to respawn the blocks. It's a bit of an annoying, it's a bit of a dickish one, but it exists. So, uh, yeah, be careful of it. That's all I can really say. It's a bit frustrating. As is the controls whenever I'm near an edge. For some reason, Tails decides to dance on the edge every now and then if I'm pressing down. 
I understand why it's sort of um, it can be used to, it can be used for good, but I always have I always struggle with this sort of thing. And of course, um, if you're using tails as well, you will be pushed down by some sort of lava fumes above you in this particular sequence. So you can't abuse your flying. You cannot abuse your flying again from point A to point B. So just pay attention to that and uh, eventually you'll get through, you know. It, it's just a bit of a trial and error situation. Once you've figured out how to do it the first time, you'll be able to do it pretty much every time afterwards as long as you don't accidentally make a mistake. Or the bomb arc throw sort of messes you up because sometimes the bomb will arc in such a weird way that he, Tails will sometimes throw it under his arm instead of over. And when this happens, basically that can dick you over and it's frustrating as all hell. But I digress. Anyway, what we just got but there is the large bomb. We do need to make use of this because if you remember way back in, I think it was Poly Mountain in, in part two, there was a wall that we couldn't destroy through normal conventional bombs. Well, we can now use this large bomb to destroy those walls. And uh, basically a huge chunk of the game just opened up to us in one fell swoop, ladies and gentlemen. So there is that. But that is everything in Poly Mountain Zone Act 2. We are done with this particular zone. So um, let's just use the pit and get out of here, shall we, folks? Also, there's lots of spikes as well. It's around this point where the game starts to get really, really, really treacherous in terms of just having lethal traps like spikes and lava pits around, which can be a bit of a nuisance to deal with. But, uh, you know, when, once you learn where they are, once you get used to the level design, it's no big deal. Of course, the, the fact that it's a little bit tricky in the first place, just it basically means you just need to be careful when you go into the, into this area. You can't speed run the place. You can't go, gotta go fast! Wow! You know? But why are we going all the way back to the very first zone of the game, you might be wondering, ladies and gentlemen. Well, the large bomb has allowed us to... This is the large bomb in action, by the way. It, it shakes the screen and doesn't really look all that effective. But trust me, it's effective. Basically, there's a couple of areas we can now access using the large bomb in this particular stage. And we can even use a napalm bomb, I believe, at some point to um, collect a collectible, if I remember correctly. Unless I already picked it up. I can't remember. I'm, my brain's fried. Nope, I, I haven't picked it up. Alright, so first things first, grab the napalm bomb. And uh, there's an area by here that we can just chuck the napalm bomb at and... What I tried to do was I tried to get the napalm bomb to land on the floor a bit prematurely towards the walls because I don't know I, I get a weird feeling that when it when it slides across the, the floor it just has a bit more impact on the walls I don't know because if it hits it on, if it hits the floor it will scan it will fall you know it will, the fire will move forward the fire will go and take enemies out or whatnot in the area in front of it which is handy. But anyway, what we just picked up there was the spark power, or as I like to know, the seizure power, as I like to call it anyway. And um, we won't be using it for a while, but it is a power-up that is especially useful on our submarine later down the line, where we can use the... We can basically use this the spark power as a screen nuke. It will take out all the enemies on screen, which I love. I love that. I love the ability to destroy everything in existence. The only problem is it does this bright flash, so if um, if there's lots of people who have seizure issues, then chances are I'm probably going to end up putting a seizure warning on the video before I end up doing that one because it's a little bit, it's a little bit flashy, what can I say? Oh, my face! Ugh. But uh, I do take a lot more damage now that I got more health in this area, just because I'm being a lot more reckless. I don't really care about getting hits because I got tons and tons of life. That's one thing you will notice, the more Chaos Emeralds you get and the more life you get, if you play like I do anyway, you will find yourself just becoming a lot more and more and more reckless and a lot more daring, shall I say. So you'll find yourself just going through areas quickly without really caring about the enemies and whatnot. It's not a way I advise you to play the game, but I generally do that anyway, even though it's, it's, not, temp it's not good. Anyway, we got the speed boots, and the speed boots act exactly as you'd expect. They allow Tails to run. Now, you would think, that's a great power, that's something amazing to have, I would always equip it. No, 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 no. While I love going fast, there's one problem with the speed boots in this game, speed boost, speed boots in this game, and that is, even though you can run, 
with them on. You can't attack enemies. You don't, you know, they, they don't give you an attack power. You cannot use them to attack enemies. And because the enemies are filled everywhere, basically you're going to find yourself switching from the speed boost to your weapon constantly throughout the course of it. And it's an absolute train wreck, really, to get through using the speed boost. So, while in theory they sound like a good idea, because they're not a passive power, because they're a power that only works when they're equipped, you're going to run into enemies a lot, and you're going to die a lot because you don't have a means of attacking them. It's it's frustrating. They, they, they really, really could have been handled a great deal better, those speed boots, I will be honest. But uh, I'm going to readjust my equipment deck by here for a second for the next zone, and let's see what's coming up next, shall we? Because uh, if you notice, I did actually open up a new area, I believe. Did I open up a new area? Well, first I'm going to go and equip stuff, but, uh, yeah, you'll find that I, I tend to go in and out of Hills' house a lot just to equip things, because I you you do need the right equipment set for each of these levels, like Karen Forest by here that we just unlocked. Oh, I love this music, by the way. Like, you need the right equipment to be able to collect all of the correct things, otherwise you will find yourself... You know, you'll find yourself having trouble, you know, you'll find yourself going in the wrong direction... And as you can tell by here, I don't have the napalm bomb, which means I need to actually backtrack to Tails' house to equip the napalm bomb to progress, you know. You... It's it's a little trial and error in that regard, where you need the certain... the correct powers to get through certain areas, but, um... You know, it's no big deal, it just adds a few seconds onto the game time, it's just... It's a minor nuisance, I will be perfectly honest. So, uh... Yeah, I love this area. I love the music of this area. It's uh, quite tricksy. It's basically like the first the first um, zone of the game, only the second act, where it's very similar in terms to the in terms of art style. It's very similar in terms of level design. Just have to deal with a lot of vines and whatnot and a lot of mooks. But this is the area where wind becomes a major nuisance because we can't go anywhere without the wind dicking us over. We cannot go to anywhere without wind pushing us down, pushing us left, pushing us right, or pushing us up. We need to be on the ball. So uh, basically the game really wants to make use of mecha tails here and makes you make use of rocks and boulders and what have you in order to just platform up, you know. And I do appreciate all these puzzle elements because they do uh, they do add a lot to the game. But what kind of bugs me is, whenever you get past windy areas, sometimes there's no indication you can fly. Like me getting up to this particular ledge, there is no indication I was able to do that. You know, I just had to guess. But we do need to come up here because the blue Chaos Emerald is up here, so uh... And you can get through this game without collecting a single Chaos Emerald, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't want. You know, you can... You can get through the game collecting only the things that are mandatory to open up the levels. Would I recommend it? No, I would not recommend it unless you're a god of this. But um, it's an option, you know, you don't need everything to play through this game. And I kind of appreciate that, I kind of appreciate the open-endedness that allows us to do whatever we want. But uh, I digress. Anyway, we did just grab hold of the triple bomb, and the triple bomb will actually be from this point forward. Well, I say this point forward. From the point that we actually equip it forward, our replacement for the standard bombs. Because what it basically does is it does three whole explosions and instead of just the standard one. Which means more enemies will die, it'll be much more effective against boss battles. It's very useful. The triple bomb is love. The triple bomb is life. Do you not like the triple bomb? What are you, stupid? What are you, stupid? <laughs> Get on my level, you fucking scrubs. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a, neat, it's a neat little area. I like this place. It's, uh, it's pretty fun. A couple of collectibles in the first screen. Now, moving on to the second screen, it's, uh, Things don't really get too much more challenging, you know, like all the mooks in this particular zone we've seen before, it's mainly a platforming area, this one is, it's, uh, you're not gonna find yourself dying because a mook's gonna shooting you, you're going to shooting you, you're not gonna find yourself dying from mooks shooting you, you're not gonna find yourself dying too much at all, really, this is one of the easier areas in the game to just platform through, there are plenty of spike pits and whatnot, but, uh, 
the game expects you to fly over them, and as you can tell, the power up over here, we do, we will be picking up the power ups later down the line. Basically, to get these power ups, we need to actually go down underground and then all around. <laughs> I made a Sonic reference. Uh, if no one knows what I'm referencing, it's Speed Highway, up and down and all around. They, they, the, the, the sound guy says that occasionally during the song. It, 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 it's a good track. You should check it out. Check out Speed Highway's soundtrack in Sonic Adventure. But uh, yeah, you do need to go underground. You do need to watch out for the spikes. It's honestly, it's not that challenging. You just need to watch out because I think there may be a bottomless pit underneath. And if that's the case, there's a chance the bottomless pit will kick you out if there is one. So. That's the only thing you really need to watch out for. Just don't touch, don't, don't go for downwards too much. And with that, we get the last icon of the game, the Sonic icon, which gives us the spin dash. The Sonic icon is the best power in the entire game, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to see it in action closer to the end game, we will be, but uh, it, trust me, the Sonic icon is absolutely amazing and. It makes the game so much more fun to blast through because it, it the game will end, start resembling an actual Sonic game more so now that we got that. Because we'll be able to spin through mooks, we'll be able to move at relatively fast paces, you know, we'll be quick. Gotta go fast! But anyway, now uh, to get the final power of this uh, zone, we just need to use Mega Tails over here and push the spring out towards Tails. Now, you saw me push the spring earlier on, but because of how this game's programming works, when you walk off screen, item locations will tend to respawn to where they are originally. So even though I pushed the spring out once, I needed to push it out again just because... The game's program and said, nope, 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 you need to do it while you're sitting next to the area. But with that, we got the proton torpedo? What, we're gonna shoot it into an exhaust port of the death egg? Jesus Christ. Yes, the proton torpedo, which uh, we will be using much, much, well, I say much later on. I, for I keep forgetting how short this game is. We're almost done with the game. So we'll probably be using that next part. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this part. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish, people. And I'll catch you all next time as we go into the semi-final part of the playthrough. We're almost done, folks. So, you know, it's a, it's a pretty good time. So, yeah, thanks for watching. See you after. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish. I'll see you then. Bye!